Mayor Eric Adams sent a clear message on Friday night, the coldest night of the year, when he spent the night at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal in Red Hook to prove that the new facility housing migrants was actually livable. Yeah, the next night, Mayor Adams returned to Brooklyn after an off-duty police officer was shot during an attempted robbery in East New York. So joining us this morning to discuss these topics and more, Brooklyn Borough President Antonio Reynoso. So good to see you, Borough President. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's get into this off the top, right, with the 26-year-old officer shot on Saturday night. We've been reporting this morning remains in critical condition at Brookdale Hospital. Is there any update um, not only on the officer's condition but on the search for the suspect that you're aware of? No. So far, the updates that I'm getting are that he's still in critical condition and they're still hunting for uh, the perpetrator um, who shot him. So unfortunately, there's no closure at the moment. Um, and it's a tragedy. Uh, you know, one of the folks that are on the ground protecting us uh, at all times, uh, and this just plague of gun violence and just the amount of guns we have in this city really needs to get under control. Um, and uh, it's a tragedy, but uh, unfortunately, he's still in critical condition and uh, the perpetrator is still on the loose. Mm. Yeah, hopefully he will continue to get better. Um, I just wanted to ask also, what are your thoughts concerning the new migrant housing at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal? Have you actually visited that site? Is it hard to get to and from? You know, that was one of the big concerns is that people who are staying there, the migrants staying there, wouldn't be able to get to their jobs. You know, no, no access to you know, subways or buses. Yeah. So I did go. I visited the site, um, you know, under the circumstances that currently exist, um, uh, unfortunate circumstances, over 40,000 migrants that are now living in shelters, hotels, and in this, uh, in this uh, new site, um, it, it's just unfortunate across the board. So under those circumstances, I think people have to understand that, uh, you know, there's, there's heat, there's food, there's health care, um, you know, recreational activities. They're getting a, a pass to go and come on the ferry every single day, um, uh, wherever they want in the city. Uh, there's a bus that drops them off at the Barclay Center every single day, and the bus is uh, open till 2 a.m. So, or, or works till 2 a.m. So again, the circumstances are not ideal. Um, no mm -hmm. one wants to be where we are right now. But under those circumstances, the place is safe, uh, safe is keeping them healthy, um, and it's providing a roof over the head in these cold months. So, um, again, don't want to be here. Uh, it's not an ideal situation. Uh, there's very little privacy in those spaces because yeah. it is a congregate setting. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, given the resources we have and the amount of people coming in, um, this is at least a safe space with uh, heat, food, yep. uh, you know, comfortable space to, to bathe and so forth. So, yeah, under those circumstances, I think it's an appropriate place. Yeah, and the mayor was out to say that he wanted to sleep there because he wouldn't want anyone else to sleep at a place that he wouldn't be willing to sleep at, so putting his money where his mouth is. Um, let's talk about yeah. the MTA releasing their plans, Borough President, for redesigning these bus routes in your borough. Right? We hear a lot of talk about the bus routes, some <laughs> transportation deserts in parts of Brooklyn. So where do the plans stand? What neighborhoods will be most impacted here? Yeah, so the plan is concerning, obviously. What you hope to do here is have a bus system in Brooklyn that helps the transit deserts and the areas that have less transit, yeah. that don't have trains or have limited bus routes or are people that are using cars, right? We want to move people away from vehicles, then we got to give them alternatives that make sense. So this bus redesign should really be focusing on the areas that don't have a lot of transit opportunities. And I don't think it's necessarily doing that. We're seeing some reductions in Coney Island that are extremely concerning and some issues with uh, trying to combine two bus routes into one in Bed-Stuy. Uh, but overall, looking at the plan, it's just really uh, more of a logistics conversation mm -hmm. with the NTA uh, as opposed to looking at where the seniors are, where are the transit deserts, and really trying to build a transportation, a transportation network that works around those areas mm -hmm. instead of just looking at uh, logistically or looking at a map and trying to build an efficient route as opposed to using data to be able to dictate the outcome. So uh, it's concerning, but we'll we'll get to the bottom of it. They're still in the, in the portion of this process that is taking input. So I'm happy to see Brooklynites stand up and make sure that they get the best routes possible. Yeah, so much we want to talk to you about, uh, Borough President. Uh, we also want to ask you about the big expansion taking place in Brooklyn, thanks to the partnership between SUNY Downstate and Maimonides Hospital. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, so these are two sites. Uh, one is uh, mostly more so known for its research and uh, and the other site known for its care uh, and combining this effort between 
uh, Sunni downstate and Maimonides means that they're both going to get the best of both, both worlds. We have uh, extremely great care in Maimonides. Uh, you know, it's, it's a star within Brooklyn in the work that it does for cancer. Mm -hmm. And Sunni downstate that has one of the greatest research facilities and uh, programs in, in all of the borough as well. Combining is just going to make it better for folks that are seeking help. And also, these are two sites that are taking care of folks that are underinsured or uninsured or are poor. So we're not looking at a premier cancer facility that's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars or not be accessible mm -hmm. to the people of Brooklyn. This is a great partnership, and I'm really excited to see it happen. Yeah, it sounds like it also. You know, the purpose of these conversations and having all of you on is to really give people an insight into what's happening in Brooklyn. And just in time for Black History Month, the Lefferts Historic House in Prospect Park getting a whole new look. So what exactly does that look like and um, the timeline for the project when it's going to be completed? Yeah, so we're excited about this uh, new a house that is going to actually be a memorial to the Lenape people. The Lenape are uh, were taken off their land, uh, both by uh, settlers and colonialists, but also the United States of America, mm. removing them from their land abruptly. Uh, and then Lefferts, uh, a family known for being slaveholders. Um, and what we want to do is allow for this house to kind of just speak to the history um, that exists it, that existed in the house and in and around this area um, in an effort to just educate uh, folks. So we're really excited about the museum and what it's going to propose and what it's going to show. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a little bit of Brooklyn history that we would love for people to learn about the Lenape people, learn about Lefferts, right? Yeah. Good or bad. I think knowing our history is valuable. So we're really excited about uh, the potential here for this museum. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's done hopefully by by the before next year, but I'm not 100% sure on the timeline. We'll be we're talking to Prospect Park now to get details on exactly what we think that it'll, it'll be completed. All right, sounds good. Thanks again, Brooklyn Borough President, for taking the time to speak with us this morning. Always good to see you. Thank you so much. Have All a right. great Monday. You we'll too. We'll see you next month.